Hello all, and this video is meant to actually now have an in-depth discussion with Husserl's not only concerns with naturalism, but his actual phenomenology, uh, as we'll take a look at. And so if we were going to start uh, where we left off in our last video, and uh, the method, um, now we want to see how his critique of naturalism is the launching pad for uh, the method. And so, basically, the way we can look at naturalism through his Searle is uh, his concern of the explanation of, you know, every theory of the world, whether it's culturally or historically, um, has this sort of fixed um, 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 principles that um, can only really be looked at through... Uh, this empirical lens, which of course Husserl, uh, you know, respects to some degree, um, but um, he really sees though that psychology as uh, the underlining way for how naturalism is observed through us. And so, if we want to go back, we would actually have to go as he does to um, what Descartes really saw as us as thinking things as compared to um, extension or um, these sort of principles uh, out there. Of course, this would then lead to uh, a relativistic way of looking at this thing, perhaps uh, as Husserl does when he looks at someone like uh, Delphi. If you remember, he looked at philosophy through you know, different psychological worldviews. So, you know, you have the rational, the ethical, and the empirical for him. Um, you know, obviously this is going to lead to relativism because, um, you know, none of these worldviews are uh, actually uh, the one true way of examining the sort of extension since there is that duality there of uh, difference. And so, you know, Husserl's trying to find, you know, the, the universal foundation for how all of those sort of temperaments are allowed to examine or, or be empirical. He wants to, you know, place these sort of disciplines as they're you know, fragmenting out uh, away from philosophy, uh, you could say, actually or um, the way Husserl wants to see philosophy, as we'll look at later. And so he wants to, you know, get back to that foundationalism uh, or uh, the structures of, of the self and how we look at these sort of uh, worldviews. And so if we were going to, you know, be quick and concise here, the best way to, you know, look at this critique is perhaps the way you look at the subject and object and how science operates under this score, sort of scheme or dichotomy uh, through Descartes. Uh, this is the dominant way of thinking uh, for science uh, where you isolate you know, an object and theorize about it, but you're not actually getting at your own subjectivity or the way in which those objects are going to be apprehended through uh, the way you know or have knowledge of that object. This is quite a artificial way of looking at it though, because um, to say I know is the activity of that subjective category, uh, if we want to be Kantian about it as he does, um, those categories uh, is how we are ultimately allowed to examine the object. Um, and so this is a discourse, if you will, or a phenomenology of the hyphen between the subject and the object. Uh, that's sort of, you know, difference in between there for how subjectivity uh, in that process will give us a way to uh, look at these objects. 
And so if we were going to use Husserl's terminology here, this is what he would refer to as bracketing or the suspension of judgment on objects of thought and perception. He also incorporates the Greek term epoche. So Husserl wants to ground the knowledge or these pieces of knowledge out there uh, uh, through these variables of particulars to actually look at um, you know the essences of objects because of course you know subjectivity you know is directed towards uh, that objective of truth and and of course objectivity needs um, it's sort of subjective process in order to be apprehended. And so he's trying to say um, the I know actually out there in human life instead of theoretical presuppositions uh, of descriptions of activity of the I in the life world. The I who is within the world or that sort of pre- theoretical basis and so we want to kind of park the brakes here for a second because this is going to be important to look at how Sarch and Heidegger is going to want to look at being on that pre-theoretical basis because you know there's uh, the human life you know pre-theory uh, before these suppositions or these disciplines are able to actually examine the world um, so the naturalist, uh, in part here with what Husserl is really getting at is focus solely on that sort of objective scientific account of objects of reality, but it's leaving out the eye or that creativity, that transcendental ego. So in a way, this is the science of human consciousness or the science of the I. You can't abstract the I or remove it from the world. And so you need to look at the hyphen between uh, the subject and the object. Um, so is he, you know, taking Descartes and being more radical with the Kajito and how he looked at universal doubt, uh, Husserl's not, you know, doubting these things, but he's looking at what, you know, the consciousness of, you know, how the active I know about an object is. You know, what does that actually look like? What are the principles? What are the essences uh, of that? And so this leads, of course, to his main idea and perhaps, you know, more known than his critique of naturalism or the sciences is his intentionality of consciousness. And so intentionality, to be brief, is the conscious external reference the mind has in knowing something or the perception or knowledge that acts as a telos towards an object or activity of the mind. And so, uh, you know, the empiricist can't, you know, look through practicality, um, you know, at something like the activity of the mind or how it actually works. You can't, you know, you know, go within that and, you know, see that within the world or, or look at it in that sort of way or that representational view or, or copy, copies of the world as, you know, the 17th century uh, thought of it. Um, the way thinking actually is, just as it was for, you know, the direction or, or the telos for the medievals. Um, you know, what is that thought actually like? Um, and you don't actually apprehend everything. You don't actually apprehend ultimate reality, but you apprehend, you know, something that you subjectively are... Are, are taking in and you, you create, you know, through your subjectivity, how you see the object. Um, but of course it's done, you know, in a directive way. It's uh, 
not so, something to see empirically, but um, you know, we all understand that this is how you know we think in that sort of directional way, or that sort of way we you know problem solve or philosophize in the world. Um, and so, you know, just like with memory, in that sort of temporal way, uh, if you want to look at the tradition of that, which we will try to brush up on later, you know, memory is referring back, uh, you know, something like that. And anticipation, as you call it, is, you know, referring on to something uh, in the future. So, you know, there's a direction that these things go uh, with the way we actually think through intentions. Um, and so ideas is, um, is an activity, not just you know, the, the sort of copies uh, of the object. So uh, he wants to take that sort of Kantian influence of the experience of uh, form uh, in that temporal way of you know, how objects will be seen because of course the way I see things is through my you know temporal activities of thought uh, which then leads to what Husserl will call the constitutive act I constitute the act onto the object there is no object without a subject uh, because I need to be there to constitute uh, how it will be unified for me to perceive it and so how can there be, you know, that object without my uh, subjective uh, way of, of, of looking at it in that sort of temporal way? Um, and so, you know, how does this constitute the act of knowing for me and the act of knowing I constitute the object as something for me? Uh, so, you know, just like for Kant, the time form that schematizes the understanding uh, and how it's pulled together. Um, I think that adequately really gets to what he's saying with the constitutive act. And then he also goes on to referentiality, which is you know, the act of meaning, uh, and not just in the sort of existential way, but in the more uh, way of, of referring onto how we will order those sort of not uh, objects in the in the world so that sort of notion of you know the way we actually order our world our life experience uh, in reference to um, but of course there is you know meaning not just in just what I mean but you know in that sort of existential uh, giving meaning to the world of course which is going to be something to always precursor to to how this method will eventually uh, be used with other European writers. Um, and so ideas that I have about something, what he's trying to say is constitutive instead of that representational theory. And so Husserl, while he you know, works on the method, he also does his own sort of phenomenology of time consciousness, which of course is really getting at that sort of essence of what Kant was uh, uh, doing with the way things are unified, uh, which is of course getting at you know the foundations for uh, some of his other works with regards to uh, logical investigations and establishing you know, how this method of phenomenology can be used for logic. And then I also wanted to, you know, in part, say real fast on what he thinks, you know, philosophy should be, which I think is actually really interesting. Um, he has that essay, or I, don't, I think it's just an essay. Um, but he wants to, you know, see philosophy as a way to establish the foundations to make a more you know, rigorous science, and I think uh, the way in which I described in some of my older uh, videos with, uh, you know, looking at the disciplines and how, you know, science kind of forms these theories that kind of uh, 
seal themselves off into you know their own spaces there's no real way of organizing anymore or, or ha have a sort of placement of what Husserl would you know consider something like a dialogue on the essences what are uh, you know that sort of chain of uh, of actually getting to you know general general mature abstract principles of reality as opposed to just particulars and and so there needs to be you know a foundational discipline as i suggested but of course you know his Searle does so much you know, better here um and sort of philosophy to establish that uh you know the need to, to, for the foundation in order for all the other disciplines to be set because of course you can't have if, if naturalism or or there's sort of these fixed order of uh, of principles or or an examination of the extension if we're going to use that duality to its like real essence for what um this discourse really is um you know without the sort of foundations of understanding it then mathematics uh then anything we know about you know knowledge about anything uh can't be objective um because we don't have um that sort of universal uh rigorous way of um seeing that uh it's not relative to just world views that uh you know, can't be objective because, of course, uh, the way we you know, examine these objectives are through that uh, Kantian uh, um, ego. And so this is my uh, video on Husserl's main ideas and concepts. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, Husserl was, you know, very fun uh, to get into. And, um, you know, I think maybe... When you look at something like uh, his critique of naturalism and you know, seeing the way he obviously has a concern with how uh, we're leaving out that sort of subjectiveness or creativity for how we uh, look at the world, which ultimately, though, will lead to us not having an objective way to agree upon any of these truths. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, next time we'll get into uh, Heidegger.